consumers mm -hmm. effectively. So what do you think consumers think about the way politics has, in, has enmeshed these issues over the past decade? Mm -hmm. Consumers um, have been thinking about these issues um, deeply and carefully. Uh, we study um, consumer sentiment every six months through a survey that we do. And what we're hearing um, from that survey is that there's a real concern that this market, as it is at the moment, is not working in their interests. So people understand that there's something wrong with this market. And I think that uh, most people would see uh, Dr Finkel's report as an opportunity <coughs> to reset this market and focus it much more on outcomes for consumers. Um, on the affordability question, um, consumers are seeing and are going to see significant price rises coming through the wholesale energy market. And that's because we don't have a mechanism in place to bring further supply into the market. Consumers in our survey are understanding that there's a supply issue and something needs to be done about it. Of all the mechanisms and the modelling and the evidence and the discussion that's going on, it seems to us that the clean energy target is the least cost way of changing the generation mix from a current level of around about 13% renewables to, I think, in the order of 40% renewables by 2030. And for that reason, we think it's an idea that really deserves very careful consideration <coughs> by everybody politicians, industry, and it's certainly getting a lot of consideration by consumers. OK, Amanda McKenzie, let's get your perspective from the Climate mm. Council. Well, as others have said, the lack of climate policy, the lack of um, any sort of national plan on energy has been driving up <laughs> emissions and it's been driving up prices. And this policy is a, is a way forward through that. And whether it's an EIS, a CPRS, an RET, uh, all of the different acronyms we've heard, the ultimate question we need to ask is, is this going to tackle the climate change crisis that we're facing? And we see that starkly when we look at the Great Barrier Reef, the mass bleaching that's occurred two years in a row, the worsening heat waves, hot days doubling in Australia in the last 50 years. And so looking at this report in, through that lens, it doesn't go far enough. And there's three reasons for that. The first is that it doesn't get emissions down as far as they need to go. The second is it should be doing far more on coal. We need to be retiring coal-fired generators. And this, this report envisages uh, coal-fired generators being part of the mix till 2050, where, whereas we need to get to net zero emissions by then. And also, we need to get further on renewable energy is the third point. We can do better than 42% renewables by 2030. It should be well over 50% if we're going to be tracking to the Paris commitments. Do you, very briefly, do you back the blueprint as a kind of model um, where the targets can go up and down, it can be used to reach whatever political target mm. is set by the government of the day? Uh, the critical element for us is whether the policy can be ratcheted up over time. So as uh, Josh and his colleagues consider what the legislation would look like if they do in, in fact adopt the policy, what would be important for us is what is those emission restrictions and is there a ratcheting up mechanism over time?